God bless you, Apostle. God bless everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and being glad in the day of what God has given unto us. Um, I honor you, Apostle. I honor Prophet. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak today. Um, everyone in their respective places. I'm going to let you know now you do need your Bible and you do need your notebook. We are working the word today. Um, God has given me quite a bit with this word. Um, I'm going to walk through what it is that um, need to be walked through. Um, but before we start, it's an old, I ain't even going to say it's an old hymn in a sense, but in the Black church of what we used to sing, um, I need the oh, I need thee. That song has been in my spirit today um, with the message of what is coming forth. The message of today, I know it's uh, definitely unusual. Um, the name of the message of what the Lord has given me is called the decision to weep or well. The decision to weep or well. And I'm just going to jump right into it. I know you guys probably like, what does that mean? We're going to dig into it. We're going to dig into it. This is the word today is for the priest of God. Um, we do know we never want to um, neglect the babes in Christ or even the ones to come into the body of Christ. But this is for the priest. This is for the people that are a part of the royal priesthood, what God has mandated on your life, what we have offered him, what we don't offer him. Today is really, really accountability day. So let's just go forth. Of course, if you know me, I don't start anything without a word of prayer. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you for this day, oh God. Father, I even thank you for the platform of what you have given unto me, oh God, to allow me to be your oracle and speak. Father, I pray right now that you let my tongue be of a ready writer, oh God. Father, you hide me behind the cross, oh God. Father, I pray that every word that is spoken today, God, that you are edified by it. Father, I decrease myself, oh God. Let your people see you, God. Don't let them see me, oh God. Father, for I know I am a wretched man, O oh God, that you chose to redeem, O oh God. Father, your word said we can only come if you call us, O oh God. So I thank you, O oh God, for the calling of my life, O oh God. Father, I thank you for my appointment with you on my life. Father, I even thank you for the appointment for everyone who is present, God, in every space, O oh God, for today, for this word that come forth. Father, I do not take for granted anyone that you have placed on my watch today. Father, I pray that you open their ears, O oh God, and open their eyes to see, O oh God, what thus said the Lord, O oh God, not me, Jesus, not me. Father, I pray that no word that I speak, God, fall by the wayside, O oh God. And Father, I pray, God, that I speak no word amiss, O oh God, that will be such a dross offering before you, God. So Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Father, you have your way in your precious son's Jesus name. Amen. All right, y'all, let's work. So. The meaning of weep means shed a tear. Meaning of welling means cry with pain, grief, or anger. Weep is mentioned 102 times in the Bible. Welling is mentioned 49 times in the Bible. Cry is mentioned 168 times in the Bible. The first cry notated in the Bible was Abel blood after Cain, his brother, killed him due to jealousy of his accepting uh, his accepted offering to God and not his. Then the next one, Hagar cried in Genesis 16 for Sarah harsh dealings with her after her conception of Isaac, which led to God sending an angel to tell the uh, telling Hagar to return home. Sarah in this moment placed a foreign idol before God, which was Hagar's womb, because she placed the blessing before the promise. Ishmael was the blessing, but the promise was with Isaac. To moving on to Joseph crying from seeing his brothers in Egypt after their betrayal of selling him into slavery, only for the execution of God's will to become the house of Jacob's deliverer. To the children of Israel crying in the book of Exodus that the Lord sent Moses to deliver them out. The leopards crying in Leviticus of being unclean that God gave directed in chapter 14 for the cleansing. 
Moses cried out to God for Miriam in Numbers chapter 12 because of her disrespect to God, chosen who he spoke face to face, invoked leprosy on herself that God redeemed her after seven days outside of the camp. In Deuteronomy, the children of Israel wept because Moses died, but God raised Joshua to lead them over the Jordan. And Joshua acquired from Rahab to save her family while the children of Israel possessed the land. And Judges Barak cried to Deborah to go with him to Caesarea. Ruth cried to Naomi that she go wherever she went, and Naomi, God would be Ruth God. In 1 Samuel, Hannah's cried to God for a child. 2 Samuel, De uh, David's cried for Absalom death, as well as Amon, Amnon death, his two sons. 1 King, God heard Elijah's cry and restored life back into a young boy. 2 Kings, Hezekiah cried to God that extended his life for 15 years. 1 Chronicles, David bloodline crying out for God to deliver them from the nations of Gentiles that they may serve God. 2 Chronicles, the battle cry of the children of Judah for God defeated Jeroboam. Ezra cried on his knees to God, confessing the sins of Israel, which a crowd joined him in the weeping and the wailing, which would include the women, the children, and the men of Israel. And Nehemiah, he wept and mourned many days because of Jerusalem wall was broken down and the gates were on fire. In the book of Esther, Mordecai cried to Esther due to the script stating to kill all Jews, well in front of the king's gate due to an evil agenda by Haman that provoked Esther to go before the king. In the book of Job, uh, Job cried cried out to God because of the many troubles he was plagued with. God gave him back double for his trouble. The book of Psalm, David cries of God's goodness, regardless of his many shortcomings. In Proverbs, Solomon declares, whoever shuts his ears the cry, uh, to the cry of the poor, his cry will not be heard. Ecclesiastics declares, it's a time to cry and it's a time to laugh. And the song of Solomon, under the apple tree where the mother gave birth to you and her travail, there I awaken your love. And the book of Isaiah tells us, it's a voice crying out in the wilderness to make way of the Lord. And Jeremiah, we know as the weeping prophet because of the stiff-necked people of Judah for 40 years. Lamentations, it says it all, it's an extension of Jeremiah. Uh, it's a continuance of the prophet Jeremiah. In the book of Daniel, King Darius cried out with a lamenting voice to David to see if he was still alive in the lion's den. In the book of Hosea, God declares Israel did not cry out to him while they wailed on their beds. And Amos cried to the Lord to not declare such harsh judgment on Israel. Obadiah cried of the Edomites' refusal of aiding Israel, which led to judgment. As we know, this started long ago within Rebekah's womb between Esau and Jacob. In the book of Jonah, Jonah cried to God to deliver him out of the fish of the belly after his refusal to go to Nineveh and declare God's judgment. And Micah lamented and mourned because of the abusive treatment to the poor from the rich and God sent judgment. And Nahum cried to Nineveh of their downfall and reminded them of who God is. And Habakkuk cried to God about the sins of Judah for God, the judgment of their wickedness. And Zephaniah, Israel and Gentiles and the Gentiles received God's wrath. The word of the Lord says here is that, and it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord, that they shall be, uh, be the noise of cry from the fish gate and a howling from the second and the great crashing from the hill. How ye inhabitants, Makish, for all merchant people are cut down, all they that bear silver are cut off. And the book of Haggai is the cry from God for the Jews to come reconsider their ways for restoration. And Zechariah, an angel told him to cry with the words of zeal for rebuilding of Jerusalem. And Malachi, the cry of the altar for Judah's unfaithfulness. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as we know as the synoptic gospels of the cry of Christ for, many, for man's redemption unto God. In the book of Acts, Stephen cried to God while being stoned to death that God do not hold this sin of murder against the people. In the book of Romans, it declares we cry, Abba, Father. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, the Apostle Paul cries to each church and disciples in the way to live of the Lord. In Hebrews, it declares Christ's suffering. Christ for uh, Christ cries for deliverance for the cross, but he carried on with the course of salvation. In the book of James, cries about faith enduring trials. Let the lowly brother glory in exaltation. First Peter cries for all to grow in the fullness of your salvation. Second Peter cries about false teachers who are peddling damage to the doctrine before his death. 
1 John cry is to not love the world on the things or love on the things of the world. 2 John cries to, cho to a chosen lady, the elect lady and her children to continue to love God and one another. 3 John cries for us to prosper in all things, health and soul. Jude cries to build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now we've notated cry, weep, wailing in 63 books of the Bible. The three I did not mention is where the message that will, uh, where our message will be sourced from today. It's in the book of Joel, the book of Ezekiel, and the book of Revelation. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to start in the book of Joel or Joel, however you choose to pronounce it, chapter 2, verses uh, 12 through 13. And the word of the Lord says, now therefore say, Lord, Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So render your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great of kindness, and he relents from doing harm. We're going to move on to verse 17. The word of the Lord says, let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach that the nation should rule over them. And also we're going to move back to chapter one and we're going to go over verses five. Verse five says, awake you drunkards and weep and wail all you drinkers of wine. We're going to move on to verses eight through 11. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth, the grain offering and the drink offering have been cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn who minister to the Lord. The field is wasted. The land mourns for the grain is ruined. The new wine is dried up. The oil, the oil fails. Be ashamed, you farmers. Well, you vine dressers for the wheat and the barley because of the harvest. The field has perished. We're going to read verses 13 and 14. The word of the Lord says, gird yourselves and lament you priests. Well, you who minister before the altar, Come lie all night in sackcloth, you who minister to my God, for the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. So the mandate today, again, is for the priest of God, the ones that we, we proclaim that we are part of his royal priesthood, that you know, that you know, that you know that you are part of this priesthood, but it's also gonna speak into about the priests that are lukewarm. This is really what it boils down to. So God destroying his enemies, even if it's within uh, a tribe of praise, which is Judah. This tribe has been in rebellion to God for, um, from the book of Isaiah to the book of Joel. This is what the meat of what we're talking about today is the tribe of Judah. Even though we know that their name is praise, God loves praise. You know, uh, the word of God tells us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts in praise. But we have to remember what the word of God tells us about worship. Those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is this is important because anybody can praise. But the question to yourself, are you really worshiping? Are you really in communion with God? Are you really in covenant with him the way that you say that you are or the way that you think you are? The woman of God came through last week and she declared what the word of the Lord was saying, watch me perform. This is the word of God. But I want to remind you guys that we have to remember God is watching what we perform and what we offer unto him. So she just said, wait, she didn't know, but she said, wait, me into this for this week so god bless you um minister markiva so this tribe of god from the book of isaiah to the book of joel this is seven books seven books of the prophets well not not including lamentations because we know lamentations is an extension of the book of jeremiah but for seven books in the book of isaiah judah had sinned against god as the whole world sinned against god which was 40 years in the book of Jeremiah, Judah had sinned against God for 40 years. Jeremiah contended with Judah for repentance. This extended for an additional 11 years into lamentations. In the book of Ezekiel, Judah had sinned terribly against God. This was for a 70-year period. Daniel, 70 years that they were in rebellion again, that the Lord allowed that Nebuchadnezzar, he uh, besieged Judah 
from Joe, um, Joe, uh, Joe, Joe Kim. I can't say that right now. It's not coming off right. In the book of Hosea, it was for 40 years that was in rebellion. And back to the book of Joel, Judah was in rebellion for 39 years. Now, the meat of me telling you the numbers and the times for this, if we know biblically, the number 40 means, excuse me, it's, it's a testing and trying period that that's what 40 represents, 40 is acknowledged of. But the number 70 in the Bible is, is um, known as a restoration number. So if you look at this, God gave them two occasions in the book of Ezekiel and Daniel for restoration, what they choose not to. But from Isaiah, Jeremiah, Le uh, Lamentations, Hosea, and Joel, there each was 40 years that they were in complete trying time of God. This was three centennials, apostle, over three centennials. This was a 310 years that God was uh, pleading with them to get this thing right. So I thank God for the fruit of the spirit when he tells us that we have to be long suffering because we're so impatient with everything of what he wants uh, us to do for us to wait. But we have to remember that God is slow to anger. And I thank God that he's slow to anger because there's so many things that I've done. It's so many things that other people have done that God could have just outright killed us. But his grace and mercy is sufficient unto us and that he does not go back on his word of what he said, that the thoughts that he have towards us that he will perform. It. Even in our rebellion, and he knows in the extension of the rebellion that comes, that he's still going to perform what he said. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If God said it, it is established. It's nothing else to it, but it does not negate from us breaking his heart. It does not negate from God not feeling. It does not negate that we don't honor his word. It does not negate from him being a covenant God and us being contractual people. When things don't go our way, we're quick to give up and throw it away. But again, the Lord blood made atonement for all of us. He don't, re he don't withdraw, even though we do, he still stay. This is one of the main reasons I believe the word of God tells us don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Once you make covenant, once you make relationship with him, it's not wisdom to pull away from him. You are grieving his heart. You are breaking his heart every time that you do this, but you are asking God, God, I want you to do this. God, can you trust? I want you to trust me with that. You can't handle the basics of the relationship of what God has given unto us. I feel glory, but we can't handle the basic things of what we are to do to stay in covenant with him. So you can't sit and ask the Lord to do all these astronomical or different things for you. And you can't even handle the basics. You, you're not accountable in your prayer time. You're not accountable with reading your word. You're not accountable with ministering to the people on the street. You're not accountable of taking care of the poor and the, uh, and the orphans and the widows. You're not accountable of taking care of the elders. You're not accountable for what you're speaking out of your mouth. You're not accountable for what you're hearing and the seeds that are being planted in your spirit. You're not accountable for what's going outside of your mouth. You have to be accountable. Life and death is in within the power of the tongue, but we have to remember if we want God to call us Bethel, we have to keep it clean. The word of God tells us that his house shall be called a house of prayer. Bethel means where God dwells. So if you want God to dwell in you, you have to be that house of prayer. You have to be accountable for what he tells you to do. You have to be accountable to what you're listening to and what you're watching. You can't sit here and be watching Atlanta Housewives today and next day you're declaring the word of the Lord. It's a certain level of consecration that you're supposed to be to. The word of God tells us that we're part in a sense of a holy nation. We're part of a royal priesthood. What you do in the outer courts is not permitted in the inner. It's not even allowed. It's, it's not permitted in the inner courts. And we have to stay accountable with these things. So we're going to move on to the book of Ezekiel chapter eight. And we're going to start at verse one. Like I said, I have a few, a, quite a bit, a little bit of, of chapters today, but we're going to work this word. If you know me, you know that I'm all for working the word. I'm all for being saturated in the word and what the word is saying and, and us utilizing the word of God in a proper context. So the word of God says in book of Ezekiel, and this is still the tribe of Judah. Be very, very clear. This is still the tribe of Judah. Chapter eight. Verse one, the word of the Lord says, and it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me, that the hand of the Lord fell upon me. We're going to move on to verses five through 18. The word of the Lord declares, then he said to me, 
son of man, lift your eyes now towards the north. So I lifted my eyes toward the north. And there north of the altar gate was this image of jealousy in the entrance. Furthermore, he said to me, son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel commits here to make me go far away from my sanctuary. This is what they're doing to make God go away from his sanctuary. Now turn again and you will see greater abominations. So he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, there was a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, son of man, dig into the wall. And when I dug into the wall, there was a door. And he said to me, go in and see the wicked abominations which they are doing. So I went in and I saw there was every sort of creeping thing, abominable beast, which means this means snakes, this means roaches, this means this whatever you can think of. If you're not a fan of, of animals, I'm not, I'm not a fan of reptiles. Let me be very clear. Anything with a reptile, you can forget it with me. That, that is even hard living in the state of Florida because I'm not with that. But this is what he's saying, uh, um, that it, that they're doing wicked abominations before him. So the word of the Lord, and I'm going back to verse 10. So I went in and I saw there every sort of creeping thing, abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed around on the walls. And there stood before them 70 men of the elders. Don't you think this is ironic? He gave them 70 years, which means restoration, but it's 70 of his elders in the house of Israel that in their midst stood um, Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, each man had a censer in his hand and a thick cloud of incense went up. If you don't know what a censer is, a censer is what holds incense, what, what holds it while it's burning. Verse 12 says, and he said to me again, son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the room of his idols, for they say the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken us in the land. And he said to me, turn again, and you will see greater abominations that they are doing. He brought me to the door of the north gate of the Lord's house. And to my dismay, women were sitting there weeping for, weeping for Tammuz. Now, let me give y'all a quick, a, a quick teaching about who Tammuz is. If you remember in the Bible, we all know who Nimrod is. We all know that he he built the tower. He was trying to build well. He built the Tower of Babel, but they were not successful. But you have to remember here um, with that before he was killed, Nimrod ended up marrying his mother, which we know, which is so nasty, but we're just speaking back in the time that he, he married his mother. So Tammuz is actually the quote unquote son that was created. And Tammuz is actually a, a low deity that is supposed to be for, 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 for uh, fertility, um, to have kids or whatever it is. But of course, you have to remember with um, Nimrod and his wife, her name was Semiramis uh, or something like that. But they are known as the Isis, uh, the idol gods, uh, Isis and Orsis. And this created a whole, this, this backs all the way up into perversion. As we know, perversion was conceived with Noah's son, Ham, but it was birthed out through uh, the, the idol gods, Isis and Orsa. It was birthed through the manifestation of their son, that it was birthed into the earth with the spirit of perversion. So this did not just create an, a, an occult thing that men were praising them and praising a son that she magically conceived two years after Nimrod's death from a tree with all due respect forgive me for saying this apostle but that is stupid I, I that is really really stupid but that's this is the history of it and it just shows you what people believe if they if they're really convinced that they believe that this woman conceived a, a live baby from a tree which she stated was the spirit of Nimrod being reincarnated so she's basically saying this is idol God to moves where God his children of Israel the tribe of Judah are praying unto him for fertility and the word of God lets us know that God came that we may have life and have it abundantly but also God says that he's the if we drink of his water from the well that he is, we'll never go dry. So if we know life is in God, why are you praising an idol? This is a this is considered a golden calf. This is a golden calf. There's so many golden calves, but this is it, which is crazy. So we're gonna move on. Um, we're gonna move on to uh, verses. 17. Now I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna go on to verses uh, 17, actually 16. 
Um, so he brought me into the inner court, the Lord house, and at the door of the temple, the Lord between the porch and the altar, I'm going to get to that in a little bit, what the significance of between the porch and the altar, because so many saints always proclaim this, and they know that we all know that this is the, in the word of God, but it is a significance for the porch and uh, between the porch and the altar, but we'll get back to that. Between the porch and the altar were about 25 men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east, and they were worshiping the sun toward the east. And he said to me, have you seen this, O son of man? Is it trivial things to have the house of Judah to commit the abominations which committed here? For they have filled the land with violence. Then they have returned to provoke me in anger. Indeed, they put a branch to their nose. So why is the Lord saying that they put a branch to their nose? I'm going to let you know that in the original text, it actually says my nose, meaning God. But this is the Takan Sophrim of the Akkadian exp uh, expression, meaning this is a gesture of humility used to commit, uh, used to come contritely before a deity with a petition. So they're praising a the foreign God. They're praising the sun. God created the sun. And you're praising the sun thinking that this sun is going to uh, bring bring stuff to you, bring your petition to you. God is the creator of all. The sun is a resource. God is the source. Do people not understand that we are actually living inside of God? It's different levels to heavens and everything. We live, we are in the inside. God doesn't dwell in time. It's us that dwell in time. We're on the inside. The word of God lets us know that the earth is what his footstool. And it's not just one heaven. We know the heaven that we want to go to, but it's multiple. It's multiple, but that's for, that's for another day. So we're going to move on to chapter 16. And, and I'm reading this because of show just the disrespect of what has been given by the people that God chosen, that these are supposed to be God people, the offering, the profane offering the profane <laughs> stench of what they've given God with praise and worship. You're praising God openly, but secretly behind closed doors. You're committing and you're doing so many things. This goes on with people smoking. It goes on with people drinking. This is, goes on with people committing fornication, adultery, whatever it is. Just because certain sins are not named out in the Bible, it does not mean that it's not a sin. Anything contrary to God or the knowledge of God is against God. And you can't call yourself a child of God, you know, regardless if your name means praise or not. The word of God says that the, he'll allow the, crops, the, the rocks to cry out. Everything will give praise to God. This ground, the dirt, everything. So it doesn't mean you're in the will of God. It does not mean that you're in covenant with God because everyone can praise God. But again, the word, the word for today is, are you truly one that worships him? In spirit and in truth. So we're going to go on to chapter 16 in Ezekiel. Y'all bear with me. Uh, we, we work and I got one more, like one, one, one more thing. And then we're going to, we're going to do this thing. So chapter 16, and, and this is God talking. This is chapter 16, verses six through nine, six through nine. And the word of the Lord says, and when I passed by you and saw you struggling in your own blood, I said to you in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you in your blood, live in your blood. He's telling us to live in our own blood, our blood that does not make atonement for anything, but yet you still are seeing us enough to give us life, to tell us live, to tell us live, to tell us live, knowing that our blood doesn't make atonement for anything. But he says, and when I passed by you and saw you struggling in your own blood, I said to you in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you in your blood, live. I made you thrive like a plant in the field and you grew, you matured and became very beautiful. Your breasts were formed, your hair grew, but you were naked and bare. When I passed by you again and looked upon you, indeed your time was the time of love. So I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you and you became mine, says the Lord God. Then I washed you in water. Yes, I thoroughly washed off your blood and I anointed you with oil. None of us cannot say that the Lord has not done this for us. None of us can say that the Lord has not done this for us. Whatever your blood was, whether it was drugs, whether it was alcohol, whether it was sex, whatever your blood spill was, God said, live in your blood, live in it. And that he still made covenant even when we weren't right. 
because th that's the significance of what it says here is in, in um, verse nine that I washed you in water. It's significant for that. And then I anointed you with oil. We were drowning in our own blood. We moving on to verse, uh, verse 12. And I put a jewel in your nose, earring in your ear and beautiful crown on your head. And I'm going to jump down. It says, you were exceedingly beautiful and succeeded to royalty. Your fame went out among the nations because of your beauty, for it was perfect through my splendor, which I had bestowed unto you, says the Lord. But you trusted in your own beauty. You played the harlot because of your fame and poured out your harlotry on everyone passing by who would have it. And we're going to move on to verse. Um, we're going to actually move over to verses. 22. And in all your abominations and acts of harlotry, you did not remember the day of your youth when you were naked and bare struggling in your own blood. How quick it is for us to forget where the Lord has brought us from. How quick do we forget when he put a little bit of change in our pocket, when he cleans us up, when he put a robe on us, when he puts a, thing on, a ring on our finger, that we, are, we forget so quickly of where the Lord has brought us from. And we start thinking carnal, thinking that, oh, this was of us. No, it's not of you. This is God's grace and his mercy that he allows you to even live. And I told you before, Apostle, I'm one of them people. I thank you, Jesus, that I'm not you because I would have let everybody die. That's just the honest truth, the, the grief of what we give unto him. But thank God that he's a just God. Thank God that we are not God. Thank God that he's a long suffering God. Because we all know if it was if it was left up to us, everybody will be in hell. And we all know this, everybody will be in hell. So we're gonna go on to verse 30. And, and, and this is God's view of the act of harlotry. And this actually broke my heart with what he was saying. And the ver verse 30, we're still in chapter 16. The word of the Lord says, how degenerate is your heart, says the Lord God, seeing you do all these things, the deed of a brazen harlot. You erected your shrine at the head of every road and built your high place in every street, yet you were not, yet you were not like a harlot because you scorned payment. You are an adulterous wife who takes strangers instead of her husband. Men make payment to all harlots, but you made your payments to all your lovers and hired them to come uh, to you from all around your harlotry. You are the opposite of other women in your harlotry because no one solicited you to be a harlot and that you gave payment, but no payment was given to you. Therefore, you're the opposite. This is God literally telling, telling uh, Judah, you trashy. You didn't gave your Jews away from free. At least the prostitutes um, got common sense enough to get payment for, for what they giving up free. We, we know the analogy here. We ain't gonna get into that deep, but we know the analogy here because you what you giving up for free, which we know what the power of what that holds. We, you know, we're not in an, well, we ain't in an intimate space, so we can't say certain things, but you know what the I'm going to say, it. you know what the power of an actual vagina has. And God is literally saying that what, you, what was meant for me, you're giving this away freely to other people. We understand that we are the bride and he's the bridegroom. We know what the significance of sex means, what, what it means pulling forth as far as intimacy, intimacy go. Why God said this is set fully for marriage and nothing outside of marriage. But I wanted to let you know what the word brazen meant. The brazen, when he said brazen harlot, he just didn't say a harlot. He called the children of Judah a brazen harlot. It means not a shame without any attempt to be hidden. So you just doing stuff willy nilly. It's pretty much what he's saying. And, and you just out here doing what you want to do. Have no remorse for what you're doing. You just out here loose goosing. That's what we call it. We call it loose goosing. So I'm going to move on to verse 59. The word of the Lord says, for thus says the Lord God, I will deal with you as you have done who despise the oath by breaking the covenant. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Now, for someone who don't really don't know what the, in the word of God, you will sit here and be like, how can God in a sense declare judgment in that way? But in the next verse down, he's, he's offering redemption once again if you consider and if you change your ways. So we're going to uh, go down to, excuse me, I'm going to go down to Joel, uh, 
Joel 1 and 4. And it's so crazy because Apostle, <laughs> they were just here, and um, some of my sisters of the ministry, they were just here a couple of weeks ago. And we were sitting around the table joking. We were sitting, sitting around the table laughing and everything. And out of nowhere, they started talking about bugs. And I was literally sitting and thinking, and I know she saw me um, when I got quiet. I know everyone saw that, but I was thinking because they were digging into this message and they didn't even know that they were digging into this, digging into my message. But the, the, the other part of this message, because of the acts of holotry of what has been done, you know, we're going to dive into the consequences of what happens with these things. So in Joel 1 and 4, the word of God says, what the chewing locusts left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locusts uh, left, the crawling locusts have eaten. And what the crawling locusts have left, the consuming locusts have eaten. So I know you're like, where are you going with this key? So we all know in the word of God, we know in Joel um, 1, I'm going to read the King James version of what we know. Let me go right here. And the word of the Lord says, that which the palmer worm had left, the locust eating, and that which the locust have left had the canker worm eating, and that which the canker worm had left had the caterpillar eating. So we're gonna go on to what I what I was getting into about this because they don't know because we we know anytime the Lord is speaking about locusts in the Bible, He's speaking about judgment. He's speaking about judgment of sin of what has happened or what has occurred. So I went to uh, uh, to go into a, a study of it. And I'm like, Lord, what does this mean? Because I'm like, we, we say these things, we declare, but what does this really mean? So of course I went into when I, uh, with what the meaning of chew means. It means a repeated biting or gnawing of something. The meaning of swarm is move somewhere in large numbers to flock, crowd, surge, or flood. The meaning of crawl means slow creeping mode of locomotion covered with moving things. And of course, we know the meaning of consuming means absorbing, engrossing, or preoccupying. So with that being said, I was like, well, okay, God, we know that this thing happened. So we, we go over to, um, even though this is in a, the, the first chapter of Joel, we move to the second chapter and the word of the Lord lets us know in uh, Joel 2 and 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army, which I sent among you. So we know that the Lord is saying this. So I'm like, okay, God, you know, you have to give me a little bit more insight on this. And, and this is what it was that was mind blowing to me. So a locust is actually a large and mainly tropical grasshopper with strong powers of flight. A canker worm are caterpillars that move with distinctive looping motions. Caterpillars, the larva of a butterfly or a moth having a segmented worm-like body with three pairs of true legs and several pairs of appendages similar to legs. And then you have the palmer worm, a hairy caterpillar injurious to vegetation. But what kind is unknown or undetermined? Palmer um, means any hairy caterpillar which appears in great numbers. So the common thing here with this, because I'm like, okay, God, we I see uh, what you're saying here, but the commonality with all four is polymorphism, uh, which actually means the condition occurring in several different forms. So everything that I've listed out to you besides the locusts, because we know that that's a grasshopper, but the canker worm, the caterpillars, and the palmer worms, they're all uh, caterpillars. But again, this can be w uh, within our lives too, how sin in a sense, come forth, the condition comes forth in several different forms in several different ways. Have you ever been in a situation where you like, oh, I like this woman, I like this man? Yeah, their name is different, but the spirit is still the same. Or the people that you've been around and you attracted as friends that is still the same. Like it's like, yeah, this person's name is different, but it's the it's the same thing backing. And this is the same thing of what he's saying here. And and I even went to um go a little further to see about the locusts. And what I learned about the locusts is that they're a hemometabolic, um, which means it's an incomplete metamorphosis, which so many of us go through. We get to a certain point in God and we stop. We don't let him complete what he, uh, what he wants to do to move us from faith to faith to glory to glory. And we get stuck. We, um, we get stuck. We don't progress anymore. And it, it's, a, uh, it's a sense of in a, uh, incomplete metamorphosis. So many of us, we go through that. 
And I'm just like, my God. And then I even went to um, went further because I'm like, okay, God, um, with these the different types of caterpillars, and you're saying that some are hairy, some are not. What's the difference? But what I figured out is two different types. It's either a butterfly or a moth. A butterfly goes through something, uh, goes through four stages with uh, a no pupil stage, which is actually going through a chrysalis. It's either you go through a chrysalis or you go through something called a silky cocoon. And the difference of how you know what a butterfly is, is the wings of a butterfly is vertical, but the wings of a moth is actually resting down. And I'm like, God, um, even when you're speaking about the palm worms and what you're saying, it's pretty much you don't know what is going to be what, depending on what stage they choose to go in. So in a sense, you could choose to be a butterfly, you could choose to be a moth, you could either live for Christ or you could live for the devil, it's your choice. But either way, something is going to come forth. So it's either going to deal with the, the reigning and the judgment of God, or you're going to, um, you know, put your crown on. You're going to put your crown on. The choice is actually, it is us. It is our choice. It's a, whether, whether you choose to go to heaven, whether you choose to go to hell, it really is your choice. You know, the word of God tells us everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is not going to heaven. It's going to be people, as we know, are going to come to the, to the Lord saying, God, we cast out devils in your name. We did this. We did that. Depart from me because I never knew you. God did not know your fruit. God don't know who you are because of the decisions that we choose to make, the decisions of, uh, of what comes forth. So moving on, uh, uh, moving on from uh, moving on from that. And I wanted to I wanted to let you know, too that um john 15 and 5 says jesus say i am the vine you are the branches and if you remain in me and i in you you will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing we can do nothing and this literally speaks of uh being accountable for our spiritual vegetation and it was something that i found out too that i was just blown by what i learned is that a fact of a canker worm that most damage occurs about the time that the leaves become fully developed and that can be us when our leaves are starting to become fully developed in God, that at the time, if we allow these things to infiltrate, if we allow foreign gods, the worship of other things and the worship just don't have to be a foreign deities. It could be your wife. It could be your kids. It could be your husband. It could be your job. It could be uh, money. You can make anything your God and you shouldn't. No one belongs on that throne in your life but Jesus Christ. No one no one. God is a jealous God. I know sometimes people have an issue with that. No, God is a jealous God. If you want to serve him, you're going to do it all the way right or you're not going to do it at all. That's one of the reasons the Lord have issue with being lukewarm because he'd rather for you to be hot. He'd rather for you to be cold, but you need to make that decision of what you're going to what you're going to be. He don't want you to be lukewarm. The word of God tells us he'll spit you out his mouth. He will spit you out. It's not going to be honest. I don't blame him, but that goes back to, to letting us know you let your yes be yes and you let your no be no. So we're going to move on to actually Joel 2 and 11. And this is just to show you, you could be like woman of God. How do you know that, you know, the locusts and the caterpillars and the palmer worms and the canker worms? How do I know that this is God's great army? If you go to 2 and 11, the word of God says the Lord gives voice before his army for his camp is very, uh, very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For that day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? I'm going to read this again. The Lord, the Lord gives voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. And I know sometimes when we read these things, we think that the Lord is, 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 is speaking of us. But I want to show you something that uh, the Lord is not speaking about us here. God is actually speaking of someone, and I want to show you this. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verses 3 through 11. If y'all don't know where Revelation is, that's the last book of the Bible, last book. If you don't know, you should know the first book, you should know the last book. So let's go here. And the word of the Lord says, and, and it's such a description of what was given. We'll start at verse 3. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their forehead. 
and they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplate like breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings were like the sounds of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions and they were and their stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men for five months. And they had asked a king over them to angel, the angel of the bottomless pit, who name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but the Greek, he has the name of Apollon. Apollon. So it's a person, I know we all, we, well, it's an angel, because we all know of Gabriel, we all know of Michael, but the angel of the bottomless pit, he's the one that God has in charge of his great army when it comes to judgment. And it makes perfect sense, because if you think about it, um, uh, in the book of Revelation, it lets us know that the, the fallen angels, that it's going to be an angel that goes down to pull them from the abyss to actually pull them back up to hell. Guess who that is? That's Abaddon. Abaddon is in charge of this as well, which in a sense, if, you, if you're not grounded in God, it probably would freak you out. I'm not freaked out by these things. I, I believe if you, you are a child of God, you know you're not freaked out by, by these things. But even if you are freaked out by these things, this is just food for you to get this thing right not here to scare anybody but to get this thing right so he he is the one who was in charge Abaddon is the one that's in charge and make no mistake about it any archangel of God will carry out what it is of what the Lord has said you are no exception. Priests of God are no exception. You have to remember what happened with Eli. God didn't even want him anymore. God rejected him because of what his sons were doing. It wasn't even about Eli, but what he was guilty of by association. So my charge today is for you not to be guilty by association. You know, evaluate yourself, evaluate what's going on. You know the right and wrong things. If you're calling yourself a child of God, you know those things that the Holy Spirit is convicting you about, that's pressing you about, whether it's, you know, listening to, to uh, R&B music, hip hop, whatever the case may be, everybody's conviction is different. But you have to remember the word of God tells us there should not be any fly in the oil. If it's a fly in the oil, you are contaminating the oil. God cannot use contaminated things. God don't want to use contaminated things. Let me rephrase myself. God can use contaminated things, but God don't want to use contaminated things. If, if God giving us the purity, he, he doesn't give us a contaminated God. God don't give us himself contaminated. God is not contaminated. So we should not give him that or think we can slide by. No, God searches the heart of men and, and, and he knows what your intentions are. Or, you know, the word of God even lets us know that uh, even if you, in a sense, you're purposing in your heart that, you, uh, that you're that you going to sin and that you go do it and you're going to come back and ask God for forgiveness, that's a sin all within itself because you did premeditated sin. It's wrong. It is wrong. It's all out wrong. And we, we should not be doing these things. The word of God lets us know it's better to not make a vow to God, then make a vow to God and not keep it. The vow that we've made is God, we're going to serve you for the rest of our life. God, we're going to carry out what you told us to do in this earth. God, the charge that you've placed on our life to go get other disciples, to go get the fallen, to go help the poor, to go uh, preach your word, God, whether it's on a street corner whether it's in a church, whether it's in a stadium, whatever you said, do God, we gave you our word. We gave you our yes. We gave you the okay with the covenant of what you offered unto us. God offered that covenant. It wasn't us offering covenant to him. We can't do that. It's nothing we can, we can give God. It's only what he's accepting of us. The word of God tells us what our, our uh, what is it? Not our worship, but our is that filthy rags? I cannot think right now. I can't think right now. But if that if, if that's what it is, we, we can't make atonement with anything. And as you know, Eris said earlier, God, God wants us to be co-creators with him. God wants us to work this thing out with him, but he can't use us if we're not active participants, if we're not emptied out vessels that God, even though, yes, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Thank you, Dr. Ty. I couldn't think right now. But it's just like God don't God doesn't want to use that. 
He don't want to use anything contaminated. I don't want to be contaminated, but it's so many things that we deal with that causes that contamination. The word of God tells us all have sinned and fall short. But the whole point is to be intentional about your relationship with God. If God has told you to stop watching these music videos, whatever you're intaking in your ears, even if you're watching pornography or, or whatever it is, you know, stop it. You can't be sitting and, and watching this stuff and think you're going to go lay hands on people. That's another thing. The word of God tells us don't be so quick to lay hands on anyone. Apostle knows or whoever knows. I don't, I personally, I'm speaking of me. I don't play about the whole pray situation. I don't allow everyone to pray for me. If your life as apostle has said, it does not bear witness to my spirit. You're not going to touch me. If you've never seen a black girl turn into a power ranger, you will if you do something like that or attempt to. I'm just being honest. I don't do that. You know, you really, the word of God tells us we, we are to examine fruit. We ought to know them, you know, by the fruit that they bear. I don't, I don't play. And it's not even about being uh, a prophet or being prophetic. It's the discernment that God gives unto every child of God. If somebody is sitting here, you, you sitting here, you want to glorify. Again, everybody can praise God, but those that worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. We don't play around with any of that. Anybody part of CK Ministries, don't even try it. I'm just going to be, don't even try it. Don't try it. Don't try it. Don't try it. So we have to be accountable for our spiritual vegetation. We have to be accountable unto God because he, he cares what goes on with us. We don't want to continue to grieve him. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. And so many times we grieve him. And it's yet time and time again, this whole Bible speaks about redemption back unto him. It's like God sends it over and over and over and over again. But I thank God for him being a broken record, because if he wasn't, a lot of us would not make it in. It, 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 we would still be dealing with the separation of hell, of Sheol and Abraham bosom. So I thank God that God allowed, you know, the, the son of man, the son of God to come here to break the veil. But it's our choice. As my sister said last week, watch God perform. But God is watching your performance. What are you doing? What are you offering to him? What are you rendering to him? The word of God tells us to render him to him our hearts, not our clothing, not anything else. Why would God want you to give him something that he created? Everything is God's. Everything is God. So it's truly, truly up to you. The last thing that I wanted to um, go over was that understanding of scripture when it's speaking about the weeping between the porch and the altar. This is really a clarion call for leaders to assemble God's people for a time of prayer, fasting, and consecration. The porch is representation of flesh, the outer courts of worship. And the altar represents the spirit, the place of sacrifice, the place of death to self, and the rededications of our life back to God. That is, that is what that is representation for. So this is pretty much uh, where we at. We have to be accountable. This is the difference between us choosing to weep a well. And, and the other welling that we should know about is spoken about in Matthew 8. It's spoken about in Revelation 21, but the difference is it's not a weeping a well, it's a welling and a gnashing, and that's for eternity, and, and, and people are going to want to die, and they can't die because of disobedience. It's not just, not just for the sinners, lukewarm saints, lukewarm priests. We have to get this thing right. The word of the Lord that came in this year for me. And, and it can be for you as well. The Lord told me preparation and privacy. That was the word of the Lord for me this year. We have to allow God to prepare us. We have to allow to go in that secret place with him that he can minister to us, that we can hear what he is saying, not hearing of your soul, because it's possible that you can hear of your soul and you thinking it's God and it's not. Not the hearing of your soul, but the hearing of the Holy Spirit. The hearing of God, of what he's saying, not just a mandate for your life, but the mandate for the body of Christ, of what needs to happen and what goes on. Are you guys not watching the signs of the times of what's going on? Time is winding up. This is not playtime with God at all. I'm fearful for people who are playing with the Lord, and it's not good. The Lord showed me the rapture, not once, but twice. Very scary thing. Because I, the people that I saw on the outside, it was like a whirlwind of what was going on. Like if you saw on the Wizard of Oz, 
it was a whirlwind and no one could help them. I see someone who was related to me that was out there and I wanted to reach to help them and I couldn't help them but God, because God was catching us up to go up. That was such a scary thing of what, the God, what God has shown. But of course, we know that we are his voices here. We are the vessels that's in the earth. So if you're going to be a priest of God, give it all you got. Give God everything you have. If you not, stop playing with God and don't play with God's people. That blood will be required of your hands. Any real minister of the Lord knows that it's, it's, it's a hard thing to even want to get up to preach, especially when you know what God has told you to speak, because you're accountable for what you are saying. You're accountable for what people are hearing. You're accountable for the seeds that are being sowed in the spirit for these people and not just yourself. Don't play with God. That's a dangerous thing. God is not no, no imaginary thing. This is not no fake hocus pocus. If you are a priest of God, be a priest of God. Declare what God has told you to declare. Everybody don't have, God don't have everybody on the forefront. God has us all on the battlefield, but he has us working on a battlefield in different capacity. So ask the Lord where you are supposed to be, not where you want to self-appoint yourself because you think it's glamorous to be an apostle or you think it's glamorous to be a prophet or you think it's glamorous to be a pastor, evangelist or a, 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 a teacher. This is not glamorous. This is death. This is constant death. This is daily death. As the Apostle Paul has said, he died daily. It's for a reason. Even with, with John saying he has to decrease so Christ can increase, it is a reason. The Word of God tells us in James chapter 3 that, that, that we ought to be careful for the ones, the ones of us who are out here ministering. It's important, again, this, this message is for the priests. It's your decision whether you're going to weep or well, the proper way or the wrong way, but it's a decision. This is a, a, a daily death that we deal with, that we walk. Except the consecration, it's a lot. You think we don't want to go out and do, do other things, but no, the Lord pulls on our spirit many more times than often that we have to be separated and go before his face to hear what thus said the Lord. So that's, that's, that's the call today. It's your decision if you choose to weep or well. And again, I, I know um, anytime I minister, you guys know. Um, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I should have Acts 2 and 38 and 39 plastered over my body. Because I, I, I say this wherever. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, I don't care if you're on Facebook. I don't care if you're a priest within the Zoom. I don't care if you're on Wisdom. You, you need to repent of your sins. Be sincere with God. Really believe that he is who he say that he is. That he sent his son down, his blameless sheep, his blameless son down to die for us for the remission of our sins. That we may have the opportunity to com commune and covenant with him in that great day. Don't think that that great day is not coming. So many times people think that they, they've been saying this has been coming for forever. It's coming. Watch the signs of the time. You have to be like the sons of Issachar. If you really walk in with God, you know what's going on. So this is an altar call. If you don't, um, if, if you want to repent, go ahead. Go ahead. We are all for it. Um, the word of God lets us know that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We would love to have you. And it doesn't even have to be a part of this ministry. You can find a local ministry that are teaching truth that is teaching righteousness, that's teaching proper doctrine, that you get your soul right with God. So that is the charge for the day. Apostle, the seed of what the Lord has been dealing with me and my spirit about is for a seed of $27 because two is the number of union, seven is the number of completion, but it's not to me. Is within CEK Ministries. Hear me one, once again, it is not to me, it's not to Kivia. It's your seed for restoration unto God. And it's not you paying God. A seed is representation of what you're doing spiritually unto him. Or what you're saying and what you are declaring to the Lord. Are you, you know, rededicate. Give that petition again. Give your yes again. Yeah, um, I bow for Lee Grace out, Apostle, in Jesus' name. My, 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 my. God knows how to bring all things together. My goodness, woman of God. 
that word uh, definitely is inspired of God. Um, I took some notes. I couldn't take a lot because I was just trying to just receive everything you were saying. And even for you to put um, not just the call for repentance and salvation out there, but even the seed um, and, and, and applying the seed as part of your, uh, you, you can't pay God, but it, it, it shows him your seriousness about what you are um, saying or praying or praising or worshiping him with, or it just, it's just, um, as my husband would say, it's like skin in the game, you know what I'm saying? And, and we had talked about it earlier, the scripture God gave me to read about today I come and I, and I pay my vow to God, but we're not paying him. We are demonstrating with what we have. One of the things you said that blessed me so much that I did put down here is that there is actually nothing that we can give God. There's nothing we can give God. There is only what he will accept from us. You, you, we can do and bring to him all these things that we believe he may want. But we can't stand at the end of our life and stand there and say, God, I did this and I gave you that and I did this for you and I gave that for you and expect him to have kept all of that and put it into account and, and where he's going to reward us according to what we give. No, he rewards us according to what he will accept. Oh, my God. That to me. Um, you said so many things, but to me that really, uh, it was a, a level of revelation and a little more shifting, realigning in the paradigm because we've got to really come to this place of, as you started off saying about accountability. <laughs> You know, if you want God to dwell in you, you have to be accountable to you, you being Bethel, okay? If, if you're saying you are Bethel by faith, you know, uh, you reminded us and you told us that what is permitted in the outer courts are not permitted in the inner courts. You have to be accountable. You can no, man, no longer make allowances for sin, allowances for uh, uh, infirmity, allowances for the flesh, uh, give foothold to the devil, have your excuses as to why you are the way you are because your mama was this way or because of where you was raised, because you black or because you, no, 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 no. We have to be accountable and we cannot use our excuses to cause us to bring God any old kind of thing. He is a holy God. He doesn't bring us a broke down, holy, G, uh, unholy Jesus, uh, Jesus full of excuses or whatever. He don't just give us any old thing. And likewise, we can bring to him all that we believe that we are to bring, but we must understand that it will only be accounted what he will accept. And he'll only accept those things that look like him. The righteous, the holy things. There's so many things you said. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and be quiet because I know somebody wants to say something about butterfly and all the other stuff. So I'm going to let the rest of them come on through here because I know between Sean and, and Dr. Johnson, they was, they was, I know, I know what speaks to them a lot of times. But woman of God, you blessed us. And I do approve of that um, call to put a specific seed of $27. So those of you who are part of our ministry, those of you who are partners that minister, you know that. Um, so you still go ahead and you do your tithing and your offering or whatever your, your heart had purpose to do. But this $27 seed is something different. It's, it's a seed that, that, that you're putting in the ground and you're making a divine announcement even as a priest of God that on this day, you're making a conscious decision 
and you're putting seed on this decision that you are going to weep now so you don't wail later. You're going to weep. You're going to repent. Weeping, when I hear that weeping, it's about regretting. It's about turning away. It's about for, It's about repentance so you can experience true forgiveness from God. It's weep now or well later. Oh, there's so much. Come on through here, y'all. Bless the woman of God. We have some guests in the room as well. Uh, we have Arika Daniels with us. And um, let's see, who else do we have with us in the room? I'm just looking at some names I'm not used to seeing. So I want you to know, uh, Arika, you are welcome to share as well, along with anyone else who would like to come and bless the woman of God. Oh, my goodness. Oh. 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 I can't even um, just try to get myself together. Oh. It, I, and I sh only share this, woman of God, thank you. Thank you for your yes. Thank you for the yes that uh, through tears, through fears, through... Uh, having to say no to maybe comfortable things and being uncomfortable. Thank you. We thank you. Heaven thanks you. The, the, the people of God that want God thanks you. And I'm going to tell you, and I don't say this for any boasting or whatever, but today is my last day. I, I did a 40 day fast. And it was personal. It was something between me and God. And just some things specifically that I couldn't share with, you know, anybody, not even a prayer partner, just between me and God. And, uh, you know, it, I just felt today like such a, a lifting, such a, a breaking, you know, from some stuff that was holding me. And, you know, 40 being, you know, it's a new, you know, new day, new, you know, a turning. And I thought about, you know, um, the, the, you know, Noah being in the, in the ark for 40 days and 40 nights, rain 40 days and 40 nights. And then, the rainbow came, <laughs> the promise. <laughs> and I just thank God for your word today that um, it just solidified. It, it, it reactivated my yes. That's what your word did for me today. That's what the word of the Lord, you know, through all the things, you know, um, that was spoken. I'm like, a pop. I just, I couldn't write everything. I just wanted to allow God to saturate me with your word, with his word through you. Sometimes you, you know, you know, I did write down some things, but it's one of those messages you got to go back and listen to and just get resaturated, you know, with the word. And I just thank God for that butterfly. And I, who have I seen called da 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 say? And how you said the wings are vertical. Yeah. And it's how I see me. Do I look at myself as a moth where my wings were dead? You know what I mean? But I see the vertical. I see the wings upright. And that's what this whole season for me has done forgetting the things which are behind, reaching forward. And I place my seed right in the ground that will reactivate my yes. And, you know, even you may say, oh my gosh, Vans, I thought you already said yes. Well, <laughs> I say yes every day. Boy, I can't say yes anymore. It's chateau. Already. I can't say yes enough. <laughs> for everything he's done for me. So thank you, woman of God. I just, I love people who love the word, love digging in the word, love just marinating in the word. You know how we do, you know? And I, I can't wait to meet you. 
face to face, love on you, hug you. Praise God that day is coming. But until then, just continue to just stay blessed, stay beautiful. Uh, we love you and I just appreciate the word of the Lord today. God bless. Hey, Amen. Man, word fire. I know your Mac can't hear me long. It's quite a little deception, but woo, I'm up, I'm up here repenting as I work. They probably said I'm talking to myself, but I'm talking to the Lord. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. There are so many times that we have the opportunity to repent when we don't give thought to things that we know that it's not acceptable and permissible to the Lord being a priest of God. But at the same time, we, we do go unconsciously. So that's why it's important for us to walk in the spirit. So then therefore we don't allow things to slip by us to where we're giving a pinky to the enemy to pull on. And then now he got the ring finger. The next thing you know, he pulling off the engagement ring that, that you've been... <laughs> been make, making preparations for the, the bride, you know? So, yeah, it's, yeah. Thank you for the reminder, daughter. It was, it was uh, a little nerve wracking, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I can be transparent. I'm only human. And that time the thing is realize that, hey, you're not there, son. You're not there. And so often we tend to allow ourselves to be sidetracked by the, the as, uh, 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 as Minister Kimberly Mitchell was saying, we sometimes settle for the better instead of striving for the great and the great earth. And so, um, yeah, this is the you got them two minutes to grow up together. That don't mean that, that you're there, y'all. I know it's a bunch of noise in the background. So I'm going to go and let you mind that. But uh, God bless you, woman of God. Remember, the Lord pour back into you all that you poured out. And I know you are the first partaker of those things that you have mentioned. Amen. God bless you. Love you all. Greetings, everyone. Love you too, yeah. Brian. I'm going to jump right in because I'm going to go to this um, birthday party. But um, sister, sister, sister. <laughs> Remember I said that we all are we all are in our lanes. We all are in our lanes and we all have to run the race that God has set before us. So I just say, I am so thankful that God gave you that word and didn't give that to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest form. Okay. All right. Because I respect everybody else. I, I respect everybody's anointing because what people don't understand is that that all you cause that all you cause and so when people I, I, and you said it I, I've said it so many times but I heard you say it again so many people want to run to the altar so many people want to run and put that mic in their hand some people everybody think that this is such a glamorous thing this is such a this is something to do. I, I, I've never seen so many people want to, to do this. Like, it's just like, this is the height thing. This is something like, this is, this the height. This ain't, this ain't height, ain't nothing. What I always, when God told me that everything goes, that goes to that altar dies. I tell you what, every time God wanted to give me a title, try to give me a title, try to get me to move forward i go kicking and screaming i ain't gonna be the, I, I tell you the truth because i already know elevation in god means death death to your flesh okay death to your flesh and so i encourage you i speak life unto you i speak love unto you I speak just, I mean, just that the just God just rest and give you peace because I can't even imagine what you had to go through to bring forth such a word as this in this time. I and and I don't want it. I don't want your anointing. Trust me, I don't want it. 
ain't asking for it. Ain't even trying to, I shouldn't even probably went to the house. But anyway, <laughs> I should have bought a hot dog. <laughs> Lord Jesus, the fire that comes from you. I just encourage you to continue to stay in fast, to stay the course, to not look to the left, to not look to the right, because it's uncommon. It ain't for everybody. Everybody ain't gonna understand it. Everybody ain't gonna get it. But it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. And so I thank you for the reminder. I thank you. This is why we have to have relationship. This is why you have to worship God in spirit and truth. Don't play. You got to be truthful to God. What's what you going, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Cause I thank God for grace, but it ain't like you better be having a whole real conversation with your daddy. You know what I'm saying? You better have a whole real conversation with your daddy. So um, thank you again for that word. Thank you um, for your labor. Thank you for the sacrifice of your oil. Love you. God bless. Woo! This word. Mm, mm, mm. Good, 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 good. Man, listen. You know, you bless my soul. You know, I I was over here cracking though because <laughs> so many people, first of all, I just thank God. Sometimes, you know, when God gives you a word like this, um, it is just like Eris said. You know, but we have to do and say what God says, you know, because um, rather people like it or not, rather they have their own, you know, oh, you just too hard. Oh, but ain't no love in that. But correction is love. Ah, glory. You know, a lot of people, um, one person has said this to me one time. And uh, and this really blessed my soul because um, when you had said that if there's a fly in the oil, it's contaminated. And I, I just begin to think about how dirty and nasty a fly is, but then how dirty and nasty even sin is. Um, and yes, we have seen in the years where the oil was contaminated. And we have seen where people thought or leaders thought or whoever thought or people who was worshiping these little gods thought um, that they were doing something or that they were, um, you know, they were just doing right. But we've seen, we've seen, and, and it's again, it's not to glory in anything that has ever happened to anyone, but the boldness that you have to share, uh, I just, I really commend you, because this is so serious. You know, people have told me, one thing about me is I don't, move or do because somebody tells me to do something. I'm telling you, I got witnesses. You can ask Apostle, Sean, Tully. I, I move and do when the Holy Spirit says to do. I understand years ago when, God, and I know it was the Holy Spirit because of how he moved. When I was led by the Holy Spirit, to submit my gifts. People who were close to me was like, come on, why would you know do this? Do no, 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 no. My rebe shutu rebe kata. I knew it was spiritual though, because what I was connected to at the time, 
I knew because I prayed. I was like, Lord, why would you do this? Why? What? What's going on? And when you said what you said, separation and privacy. See, sometimes. God won't allow you to do certain things because there, I, there is a time where in preparation and privacy, you got to do what God says to do because you don't know what he's doing. Hallelujah. On the back end of things. And it's not saying that CEA was never equipped or anything. I'm not saying that. It's moving how God tells you to move when he tells you to do it. It's very important. Don't just do stuff because people's doing it. Don't get caught up in tradition. That's why, that's, and I told, I'm telling you, I told Sean this. If I'm not sensing it, I'm not going to be doing the seven last words. How many times do we got to keep doing the seven last words out of tradition? Why don't we do it on a different day? Why do we have to do it because it's Easter or whatever? Why can't we do seven words? Come on, let's listen to the Holy Spirit. In everything that you think is tongues, it ain't tongues. That's why I respect when you say it. You want to see a Power Ranger? But just let, listen, laying hands and stop. You can't play when people, when you speak over people's life. I'm telling you, I've heard testimonies when they've been at services where people laid hands on certain people and they died. I'm, listen, thank you. You my type of chick. Holler back at your girl. Hallelujah. I thank God for using you. I want to encourage your soul. Hallelujah. Because I know I know sometimes when you have to, when you have to just say what God says, rather people like it, and it's out of love. I, I felt no, they're saying it's love because God loves us. He does and he wants us to be right. And he doesn't want us lukewarm because so many times people have been lukewarm. That's why if I don't, if I don't sense something, the, the Bible says, I, um, I forget where it is, but I know that he gave, he gave, when God gives utterance, that's when men speak. If I don't hear nothing, I'm not going to prophesy or speak out of my spirit or out of just because I know the word. Are you kidding me? Because I realize the mantle and the authority of me, words that leap out of my mouth, things happen. And so you have to be humble and be submitted by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. You cannot just be saying any old thing because people do it. No, 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 no. So I respect and honor your love and your humility and your boldness. Man, there's some, I, I like this book, Apostle, we got some. So that's what I said. I thought I'm like, I'm like an air too. I'm like, this so great. <laughs> Man, if I would have known them back in the day when I was in my flesh, these are kind of girls. I wanted my team like, we put you, we ain't, you know what I'm saying? So I, I just praise God. God is good. God bless you, sis. God bless you. Uh, prophetic Minister Markeva, I knew it. I said, boy, I said, when I, I knew you were going to. I, said, I knew you were gonna be like, just like, oh, Kivia is my my new bestie in the yeah. spirit because this is she get down. I said I knew Mark. I knew you were over there just loving it. Loving it. <laughs> but I like what you said, uh, prophetic minister Markiva, about really you know how people don't understand how you wait until you have all of those things lined up in your spirit in your nowhere. Even if you get a prophetic word, it's not that you don't believe that that person's uh, not a prophet or what they said wasn't real, but there's, we understand in the prophetic that there is a time, a time to, to, to move on that word. And you've got to have that check. But I love it when you did submit your gifts because when you submitted your gifts, God has shown that we, we never got weary. Dr. Johnson, we never got weary. We never fretted over that. 
Because we knew that when you submitted your gifts years before you actually joined the ministry, but you submitted your gifts under the ministry, you know what God was doing? He was preserving. He was adding another layer, layer of security and protection on who you were and on your mantle while you continued in the season there getting groomed. But your gifts, the fullness of them weren't for that place. You set them where they were going to be. And they started mm -hmm. taking root and being covered and prayed for and protected right where they need to be until you yeah. came back uh -huh. <laughs> to walk in the fullness of those things. So you just got to be open to how God does that. <laughs> Y'all bless me. Come on through here, Dr. Johnson. <clears throat> God be the glory. Listen, the whole time, you, the whole entire time, all I could hear God saying was tighten up. I said, tighten up. That's what I'm telling you to do. Tighten up, right? And in that, and, and to me, you know, that that's why I love, I absolutely love how God loves us so much to sin. Uh, Who? Apostle, you know, I'm, 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 you know why I'm getting emotional because God has gifted apostle and prophet with so many powerful, I mean, powerful, mighty warriors <laughs> in the in the spirit. I mean gifted, anointed, for real, serious, don't play <laughs> about God. And, 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 and it is for this body. Because I, 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 I know, I know this is not necessarily about apostle and prophet. I'm just, I'm telling, I'm telling you, what a gift because sometimes people don't understand their impact until they hear somebody else i'm i'm telling you because see i know i know the history because i've been here since inception and and i'm telling you what you come with the holiness the reverence the the fear of the lord the respect the 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 know how to study out the word of God and to bring it forth with humility, power, and boldness and authority. And I'm telling you, it's like adding on a, a, a missing link. It's it, and and you don't because sometimes we don't always see. We we don't always see because we are we are in it. We are. You know, but but when you when you look at it, is God saying, "Cek, you you yes, you are the rise of the uncommon. Yes, yes, you are. This this is the dawning of a new day, and yes, you are coming into the into the fullness." Because see, you haven't seen the strategic plan. You haven't seen what, what we wrote out years ago. You haven't seen any of it. But I can, I can see God adding in another general in the spirit. That, that God can filter through anything he wants to say and you won't say <laughs> come on let's get prophetic minister <laughs> prophetic minister kivia up in here to speak <laughs> to speak what needs to be said come on give her the mic <laughs> and she ain't scared of y'all okay don't be afraid of men in their faces and so I bless God for you. Listen, woman of God, um, I just want to take take one piece. And that that piece um is when you talked about the metamorphosis of the butterfly, because that I've studied out, I've studied out the the metamorphosis, I've studied out the butterfly because that's the whole premise of, of sentimental, the poet is the sentiments of the heart, you know, my poetry transformed by his love. And so 
looking at that metamorphosis process. I love what you talked about in um, in pulling out, in 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 pulling out too soon. And, and when you jump out of that cocoon, when you jump out of that metamorphosis process too soon, the, the, the wings are underdeveloped or even the butterfly dies. And so not only are, are, is that butterfly stuck, but that butterfly will never see all of the fullness of what it is that God actually has for that for that butterfly in the in the flight that that butterfly takes and so I enjoy it I'm going to go back and I'm going to listen again because I love the teaching um I love all of the teaching but I love the teaching when you were talking about um the locust you know the palmer worm the canker worm and in all of that in 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 looking at those different developmental stages um, that was that was so very powerful. Um, I'm like apostle, uh, you know. Listen, we got we got messages upon messages that just need to be in some kind of book or manual or something. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I really don't know how God is going to do this. <laughs> but this these these messages that God is giving and bringing through this body. Bringing through, bringing through the mouthpieces, the voices that he's brought into this ministry are for more than one format. And, and they are, they're not only just one message, they are series. Cause I know you only, you, you probably really only skim the surface. <laughs> I, 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 I know, cause I can tell, I can tell. And, and at first you started running, I was like, Lord, let her slow down because I can't listen. I can't listen to saying let us know because listen, a, a apostle will be like, look, if you got a part too. <laughs> Cause she's like that. She's like that. But um, I bless God for you, woman of God. I love you. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't wait. I was so excited to hear because I had never heard you speak before. Um, you know, and so this is my first time I, I did connect with you on, on the Wisdom app. I'm looking forward to whenever you're active uh, on there again. But bless be, to, bless be <laughs> the name of the Lord for your life. I praise God for the oil on you. Blessings and peace. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Johnson. And y'all listen message me if you want the wisdom app because I want to send you a link specifically so that you can connect directly you can come right into to connect directly to me and then from there get to uh Kivia because you want to follow her follow us both on wisdom because she does a lot of ministry there and she has a multitude of followers there she does Bible study and it will blow your socks off. And you're so right, Dr. Johnson, how the Lord is adding to the ministry. And I love how each one is different, but you know what the Lord has revealed? All of us have the spirit of God, which is the fullness of who he is, but we, uh, we have varying degrees in certain areas. And so God is using that so that the ministry itself can be, like you said, Dr. Johnson, full, full, fully bright. Because you may be 100% on a certain area and Kiva is 100%, you know, Markiva is 100% in those areas that we're passionate about. And then in other areas, we may not be as skilled, you know, or, or gifted or, or anointed in certain areas because that's not where God has us focusing. But he's bringing us in where we have <laughs> such diverse uh, degrees so that we can be well-rounded. Uh, all the way around in the ministry. And I'm so grateful to God. Come on through here. Who else wants to bless the woman of God? Come on, Evangelist Abrea. Blessing woman of God is, it's, whew, it was awesome, tremendous, astonishing. God used you mightily. It was truly a privilege and honor to hear you minister from, the, from God's heart. Um, I took some notes and then I said, look, this is one of those where I can just put in my ear, walk around and listen to it because I'm like that sponge and I just soak it up. 
And then, you know, and then I soak it up some more and I soak it up some more. I am a scripture person. I love scriptures. So when you start diving into the word of God and the scriptures, I was like, oh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> Real good. Then I got two, maybe three pointers. Um, accountability. When you say that, I love that word accountability. Accountability with obedience is so essential to God's plan. It, 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 it's like a balance. It's like a scale and it has to balance off. And the other part I had was you have to, you know, it's like come out from the world. And it's true. We cannot be caught up in, in the worldly things to a point where, you know, we get focused on the wrong thing. That's, and I always said, no, I said, no, because I have separated my, not saying, yeah, I work in the world, I listen to people, but I also have prayed, I said, Lord, desensitize my ears to foolishness, anything that I don't want to hear. Sometimes their mouths be moving, and my head be, mm, I don't hear, hear a word they said. I said, if it's important, I know God will bring it back to me, because I had to do that. My, I'm so sensitive. Hand, laying hands, don't you touch me. I, I mean, seriously, I mean, I'm, I'm a little better now. I will take a few bucks, but I know about the, the transmission or uh, trans, you know, what's the word? <laughs> of spirits. I, I went through it. I battled it. I came out of it. I'm not catching nobody else's spirit, you know, laying hands on me. I don't care if they in church. I got in big trouble by <laughs> doing, not going, no, 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 that's okay. I'm good. <laughs> you know, I'm fine. It was just, it was, in me, it was, I, I, I'm good. I'm just good. That's it. And as far as I was concerned, you have to respect that in the person. Respect the God in them, that they are sensitive to certain things that others may not be. You truly, truly, whew, and my answer is yes. I'm a restoration. Whew, I'm on fire for the Lord, even more so. And my sponge is just going to continue to exhort the word of God. God bless you from the crown of your head to the very sole of your feet, everything that you gave out today, that God will return it back into you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're on mute, Apostle. Thank you so much, Evangelist Abrea. Thank you so much. Come on through here, Evangelist. Uh, Valerie, did you want to share anything? Because we want to, um, I do want to allow uh, Pro Prophetic Master Kivia to pray us out because a woman, whoa, y'all think she yeah. can teach and preach. She can pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, woman of God. You know, first of all, like, um, you know, Prophetic uh, Markiva um, said, you know, um, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your boldness, Father God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gave, uh, you net, you gave us on a death, on, on a doctrine word of God, honey. Listen here, uh, you know, like you not uh continue to play with God. We can not like continue to play with God. We either going to if you're going to serve God, serve God. If you're going to serve the world, okay, stay out in the world. Uh, and I was reading a, a scripture the other um, night, and it was First uh, Corinthians um, um, one. It says, "You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be part and of the table of devils." Listen, like you said, it, we have to make a heaven a hell. Come on here, holiness a hell. But see, you know, many people hear messages like this because they want to stay in their darkness and not come to. And another thing, it cut, listen here, it lets me know, listen here, it's time to get up a wailing and a, a weeping and a wailing. It's time for us to get back. So thank you, woman of God, and you keep on, you keep on teaching um, the word of God. You keep on, keep on. I'm telling you, it's time. It's time. 
for the real church, my God, and I ain't talking about the building, <laughs> to come for. So thank you. Thank you, woman of God. Ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Again, prophetic minister, Kivia, I'm glad that I even had the opportunity. Now, I've, I've been in many spaces with you and in, in wisdom, so I know the oil on your life. This is the first time I got to just sit back and see you not so much in the space on wisdom where you were just, you know, operating in that way, but where you were coming specifically to speak uh, to leaders and not the general audience on wisdom. And you have blessed my soul so richly and given me, oh my goodness, uh, listen, you've given me uh, so much more to um, aspire to and a word that I really just need to, to keep as part of the, there's several words that I have that are like, um, you know, uh, guiding quick uh, mantras that help to keep me accountable and in check as the leader that I am. And this is now, you know, are you going to weep now or wail later? <laughs> you know, that's, that just sums it all up for me. And so I can add that to the list of things that I ask myself, you know, um, with the questions that help to, to keep me accountable and help to, to keep my motives uh, pure um, and help me to stay on track with what God has for me and where he, um, you know, uh, listen, you, you said that this is not, this is not just about our mandate personally. You know, you, you said this is not about, you know, your life, but this is about and for the body of Christ. You know, so this, me asking this about, you know, Marguerite, are you going to weep now or well later? That it ain't even so much about me. Because as leaders, like you said, as priests, it ain't about us right now. Now, of course, you will be the one rewarded, but this is not about us. It's much bigger than us. It's not about your life and it's not about my life. This is about the body of Christ. This is about God's agenda for humanity. And so we've really got to see the bigger picture here. It's beyond us. It's about what is important to God. And so I thank you for your obedience. I thank you for your sacrifice. And um, come on through here and close us out with, with, with the last things that you want to say. Bless the people. Close us out in prayer. And uh, we will be gathering back for those who are listening on Facebook. We will be back on Wisdom tonight at 8 p.m. And the woman of God today touched on Ezekiel. Uh, chapter 16, and that's what we are studying or discussing um, in our studies tonight. And oh gosh, you bless me when you said that about, you know, he 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 told he told uh, the and of course it's an allegory for Israel, but he's speaking to live right there in your live in your own blood. God gives us permission to live right where we are. Hallelujah! But he's not wanting us to stay there, but he's calling us forth to live right where we are. And then he has made a covenant with us when we give our lives to him to bring us to the place he would have us to be. But he's commanding us right now to stop making excuses about our situation. He sent the word to live beginning right where you are right now in Christ and allow him to transform your life as you live right now. So come on through here, a woman of God, and close us out um, with the final remarks in prayer, and we will continue. God bless you, Apostle. God bless everybody who um, just fed, you know, gave me feedback and um, words for my spirit. You, you don't know, uh, God deals with me a lot in that area. I know other, I know, you know, apostle, but I know a lot of people don't know a lot of the word that God has given me. is not novice word with anything, but as he say to move forward to release, I will, but I thank God for, um, every soul that has been present. Apostle prophet showed up. That was enough for me. <laughs> Prophet showed up. <laughs> so um, 
remember this is just a reminder that seed that seed does not go to me that seed goes to cek ministries again that seed does not go to me your 27 dollars it goes to cek ministries um even if you just have a seed of seven even if you have a seed of two whatever you have you know uh, the lord knows the motive of the heart um if you don't have 27 to give whatever you have to give as a seed you know, into this work for your life, for the restoration and for the walk and the growth of yourself with the Lord, then you do that, or you, the rededication, you know, for um, for yourself. Um, I know this, this is for a seed, but I know for me, I, I rededicate every couple of years. I get rebaptized, and I've been saved for a minute, but I just do that. But that's just acknowledgement for myself, my personal conviction to show the Lord that I'm still here and I'm renewing my yes again. As one of his priests, I'm renewing my, uh, my yes. So Father God, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the word that you allow to come forth, oh God. Father, I pray right now for every soul that has been present on here, oh God, even on the Wisdom app and Facebook, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you convict their hearts, oh God, to turn unto you, oh God. Father, you're the only answer for everything of what we need, God, of what we know, oh God. You are the only answer, God. There's no answer within self, God. There's no answer within the world, oh God for what you have given unto us, oh God, for salvation, God, and even for eternity, for everlasting life. Father, I pray right now, God, that you place a hedge of protection around everyone, oh God, who's on this watch of today, oh God, everyone that heard my voice, oh God. God, I pray that you cover them, oh God, you cover their families, oh God, you cover their children, oh God. Father, I believe, oh God, the word that Marquis uh, spoke last week, oh God, that your word says that you send one to plant seed and you send one, for, uh, one to water, oh God, but God, you get the increase. So Father, I pray, oh God, as the next minister that's coming behind me to speak, God, that you water them, oh God, and that you, and that you minister them, minister to them, oh God, for them to have the right word, oh God, the proper fruits to come forth out of their mouth of what you will have them to say, for thus said the Lord. Father, I pray right now that no word I have spoken today, God, has been displeasing to you, oh God. Father, I pray that no word I've spoken has been amiss to you in any way. And Lord, if I've said anything wrong or displeasing in any way, Father, I yield and I ask for forgiveness right now. Father, I ask for forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, for I understand the accountability, God, of words, and I understand the accountability of ministering. Father, I just pray right now you continue to keep your people, God, and even though we uh, separate off of here, oh God, but we never walk away from your presence. God, you are able to keep us from falling, oh God. God, you are able to present us faultless before the presence of your glory, God, with exceeding joy, oh God. We take you, we don't take you for light, God. And Father, I pray, God, that you allow the Holy Spirit to consume, uh, continue to commune with us, oh God. Father, I see the, the revival that you have started in Ashbury, oh God. I pray that you let it be a continuance unto us, oh God. Not just in a mass, oh God, but revival within ourselves, oh God. That we know that you dwell, God, that you're here with us, oh God. Let us be accountable, oh God, and let us be Bethel of what you have called us to be oh god father we know you will not be anywhere that's dirty you don't dwell anywhere dirty god so let us give you the the most of what we can give you as a cleanliness god of our spirit god as well as our soul no as well as our soul jesus our spirit is sealed into the day of of christ but of our spirit oh god cleanse us oh god show us oh god let us not render ear to the soul oh god but render ear to the spirit of what you are saying jesus now unto you, God, because you are able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, woman of God. God bless you. God bless you all. Love you all. Gather with us tonight at 8 p.m. as we go further into the word. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Blessings and peace. God bless you. Love you.